Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, MTK Global, here in Matrim's bubble for the world title triple header, headlined by Katie Taylor and Miriam Gutierrez. I'm joined by Katarina Thanders, who fights Terry Harper for the WBC world title on Saturday night. How are you, Katarina? Uh, I'm very good, thank you. <laughs> How's your UK experience been? Obviously, in a normal time, you would have got out, perhaps explored the city a bit, got to look around, but um, how's your brief and very locked down experience been so far? Yeah, it's quite weird to be in London and not be able to see a little bit of the, the city, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, I've enjoyed being just, you know, focused and concentrated here in the bubble. So I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> you talk about that focus and concentration in the bubble. Um, does it suit a fighter because you've got time to relax your mind, perhaps visualize what you want Saturday night? It might not be as good with the fans unable to attend, but for a fighter, is it quite a, a nice situation to be in? Yes, it is. I mean, in a normal situation, you know, uh, on, on this day, you know, you have a lot of friends and family asking you stuff about tickets, maybe, and, you know, a lot of phone calls and, and you're like sorting out the, the last things for the fight. And, and now it's like everything is done. I'm here. I just have to wait until Saturday. So it's great. Before we talk about Terry, I want to delve into your background a little bit. Obviously, Norwegian by birth, but uh, yeah, you've been living in Spain for well, not just recent years. You've been living in Spain since you were a young child. Yeah, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm Norwegian, but I've spent a lot of years of my life in Spain and um, I'm very integrated in the Spanish culture as well. I always went to Spanish schools and uh, I even speak Spanish with my father as well because he was also grown up in, in Spain. So, you know, it, it's a quite big part of, of, of me, you know, and, and my culture and my knowledge. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I also feel really Norwegian at the same time. So. I think it's just a good thing, you know, because I think I have the good things from both of the countries. <laughs> it must have helped with your boxing career because other than the obvious Cecilia Brackhouse, I can imagine boxing in Spain for a female and boxing in Norway for a female is not as compatible and did being and living in Spain make it a lot easier for yourself? I think the main difference between Norway and Spain in that sense when it comes to sports is that you have a lot more equality in Norway, you know, so it doesn't really matter if you're a woman or if you're a man, uh, you will have the same kind of attention in Norway, um, you know, so, so I've got a lot of help from media and, you know, uh, Norwegian television ever since I became a professional boxer, so that's a, a great thing. That's a bit more difficult in Spain, also because, uh, you know, boxing is not really covered by Spanish television either. So it's a bit more hard to, to get that kind of um, visibility, to say it in that way. <laughs> so you haven't taken the easy route then. Um, but you started in a mixed martial arts background, am I right? No, I started with kickboxing, kickboxing. K1, yeah. So I started with that in 2007. And I started training boxing already in 2010, but I didn't do my first boxing match until 2012. Yeah. <laughs> Why the switch? I actually got to know my current coach, and we really, you know, we, we got a really good connection from the first time. And also, as a kickboxer, I used to enjoy to punch more than, than I enjoyed kicking so <laughs> I, I used to get these comments from the judges that you actually need to kick more in every round because if not you will be disqualified <laughs> so um, I think boxing suited me even better and yeah and also because I have a great team around me uh, that you know is, is more um, yeah they are boxing coaches so <laughs> you're not going to get the urge to kick Terry around the head then no <laughs> no, no no I don't even know if I remember <laughs> Um, I mentioned the Norwegian background and Cecilia Brackhouse as well. I mean, she's sort of the trailblazer. And, you know, she's going to go down as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, female combat sports boxer of, of all time. Um, being from your country, how much of an inspiration is she to you to be doing it for this amount of time as well? Not just doing it at the top level, but to keep doing it and keep doing it for this, for this length of time. Yeah, she's a true inspiration, you know. And uh, she has done a lot for for boxing in Norway as well. Uh, I mean, she, she was the main reason why they made it legal because uh, boxing was banned for many, many years. 
Uh, so was that across the whole of Scandinavia or just Norway? So was it Sweden as well? Yes, yeah, Sweden was, had, I, but not that strict as Norway. I mean, in Norway it was completely forbidden to have professional boxing events until 2016. So it was actually because of her and, and her whole journey that they actually changed this uh, law. So, you know, we have a lot to thank her for. <laughs> Let's talk about you and Terry now. It seems like this has been bubbling for a while, am I right? Yes, for a year more or less. <laughs> so you've, you've had her sort of firmly in your sights because you knew that you would have fought the winner of Eva Walsham and Terry. Um, so you would have been looking and perhaps analysing. And I know you've mentioned these weaknesses. We don't need to go into that too much. But so you've had Terry in your sights for a while. Yeah, I have. I have been studying her, yeah, for maybe one year, you know. I've, I've seen her even before, you know, because we have been following each other on social media and so on you know as I've said in other interviews she, she does have my full respect I admire her as I admire all of the female boxers because I know all all the work that we have to do extra <laughs> compared to the men <laughs> so that's why all of them you know has my respect but you know uh, yeah I've been studying studying her for a long time now so <laughs> am I right in saying you sort of helped Eva Wallstrom for a fight with Terry as well wasn't you one of a main sparring partners yeah yeah she asked me if I could help her out and it was a bit weird in the beginning but I said hey why not it's a great experience you know and it actually was so I'm very happy I went there and uh, now I I see her as a good friend you know and uh, it was great to train with somebody as her you know with her experience for two whole weeks and help her with with her camp so <laughs> I have to ask you about Terry Harper's fight with Natasha Jonas at Fight Cup. I'm sure you've had a lot of this, but um, yeah. I know you didn't feel that the draw was fair. Can you sort of elaborate on that for me? It was a stunning fight either way, but you don't feel that uh, a draw was a fair result. No, I mean, I think it was a great fight. You know, and I, I, do, I do think that Terry Harper showed that she was a, she was a champion, you know, but uh, I think Natasha Jonas had the clear punches. Um, you know, she almost got her down in round seven or eight now I don't remember <laughs> eight, round eight I think it was you know I think she had more clear shots during the whole um, fight and she she also was very very good in the in fight uh, throwing a lot of punches to the body uh, I don't know she was she just showed many many skills in the fight and I I think she deserved the win <laughs> should you be fighting Natasha Jonas now then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, who knows? <laughs> I'm not the, the type of boxer that skips other boxers, so... <laughs> um, a nice little coincidence, Rachel Ball, um, you've actually fought, uh, and that was in Oslo, you talked about boxing being banned until 2016, but obviously in recent years you fought Rachel Ball, and now you're both fighting for world titles on the same card. That's quite a nice little coincidence, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's nice, yeah. It's nice to see that, you know, that she keeps on... Uh, working and that she's here, you know, fighting for a world title on the same event as me, you know, that's, that's a really nice thing. <laughs> Just finally, I've got to ask you about this monumental world title triple header headlined by Katie Taylor and she's now the modern trailblazer for boxing, female boxing across the world. Um, are you honoured to be a part of this because this is a historic night, it's going to go down as one of the biggest nights in female combat sport history and, you know, to be a part of it, you must be honoured. Um, yeah, I'm really honoured. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing could be more great than, than share the card with Katie Taylor. I think she's a big example for all of us, you know, and she's such a humble person as well, you know, so she's an example in, 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 in all, all, all the ways, yeah. <laughs> and I said finally, but I've got to ask you how you beat Terry Harper on Saturday night. How? Yeah. I don't know how, but I will. <laughs> you meant to tell me that you're going to knock her out. <laughs> no, I won't say anything like that. <laughs> Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.